Hello, at the end of the last video I think I was just about to properly lash the connections of this carbon fiber frame thing and so I did that and then I also wanted to reinforce the connections at the top but this part here I couldn't really lash all the way around so I thought I'd build it up with some epoxy and microspheres like this and then just use some carbon toe to put a little bit over the top of that as far as I could. So that's that done and all cured now. Uh, it was quite a fiddly process, it took a while, I actually had to mix up a second pot of epoxy because it took so long to do this bit here that the epoxy was already gelling by the time I came to do this one. I let the microspheres uh, firm up a bit before I started doing this so that I could press against it without having it all splurge out everywhere. Um, so I haven't actually put much of this carbon toe on there, just enough to cover the white of the microspheres basically. Um, but it's turned out kind of quite nice. Um, I like the look of it. It has a sort of a looks almost like muscle sinews of a um, like of an animal or something you know it's like my pecs when I look in the mirror that's what they look like <laughs> um, but it's bloody hard to get a good look at it on camera but I think you can see what I mean it's sort of nice and smooth and stringy looking so I think this carbon toe was um, the perfect thing for doing this given that I couldn't lash all the way around the top of this tube. This is about the closest I could get. And this is the overall weight of that piece at that point. Made some holes in the front here for the servo cables to come through. These are for the tail servos, of course, and also for the ESC, which I decided I'll put underneath this fuselage. So there's going to be two servo cables coming through each of these kind of nostrilly looking holes. And I drilled some holes for positions for flight controllers because I'm actually going to be using one flight controller and one other board which is going to be the same shape and size as that more to come on that later if it works <laughs> and I decided to join the tail and the main section together with just a single screw as a pin in between here so here I'm just using this funny arrangement of clamps to line everything up and drill a hole the pin that I'm going to put through here is a 2.5 millimeter screw and I checked that there's just enough room for the servo cables to get around on the sides of it it might be a little bit tricky to get the pin in because the servo cables are going to be in there before the pin goes in so it might be yeah a little bit of a wriggly job to get it in there but uh, there is enough room provided you can wriggle it around and get it in there and that's what that looks like when it was done. I've been thinking about various ways to attach these braces because I don't want them to be permanently attached at least not to both sides so one side here this is going to be detachable and I'm going to use a six millimeter carbon boom and I'm going to fold up some of this unidirectional cloth, poke it about halfway up inside the boom, hopefully, and then I'll put some more of this carbon toe on the outside um, so that it's a little bit thicker because this is not going to be thick as, as thick as I want, but it's about all I can fit inside the tube, I think. And then on top of it, I'm going to squash down this nicely cut piece of foam with a, sort of a cavity there which has just enough room for about the thickness of the carbon that I want there and that's going to sit on here and squash down. So I'm just about to put my former thing on there and let this cure. It's been about an hour since I mixed this epoxy so it's starting to get quite firm which is about the time that I was hoping to try and do this so it's sitting there very nicely. Uh, I quickly gave up on trying to put that unidirectional inside the tube that was never going to happen so all I have here is the carbon toe that I stuck on the outside. Okay, next day now, it's all cured, nice and nice and hard, and it's turned out pretty good. It's about two and a half millimeters thick, which is probably what I want, and nice and shiny on the bottom. I just had packing tape on there. I'm not super excited about the fact that the fibers are all running in just the one direction here, because um, it might, might have been better to have some going this way as well, considering that you're going to put a hole in it, and then you're going to be pulling on it that way. But there's enough resin there, it's quite heavy on the resin, that I think it should be okay. I don't think this is going to do anything. Okay, this is all set now, and that's how it turned out. It's all completely flat on the bottom, and like that when you look from the side. A little bit thinner than I wanted, actually. I'm not sure why it ended up like that. Might put a little bit more of the carbon on next time I do the other one. Seems okay to me. Now I just gotta make another one.
Okay then, onto the wings, finally. Because these wings are so thick, I decided to try what I did with Home Slice 4 and hotwire a hole down the middle of each wing section to carry the servo cables. And I decided to put all the servos in the same line so that they could all share the same channel. Uh, so that's what this hole here is. And to make sure that all these holes were lining up, I used this long drill thing again. And um, so that when you put the wire down, it doesn't suddenly get to here and then get stuck because the holes don't line up, you know, that would kind of suck. And I trimmed off a little bit of the aileron sections there for this cavity for when it uh, folds downwards. This is still not quite as much as it needs, so there's a little bit of sanding required still, but um, it's easier to cut this off with the hot wire than sand it all off later on. And here I'm just about to stick the wing sections together. I decided to only have a spar that comes out to here. So this is the root here of the wing. And the spar is going to stop here. And I'm hoping that the wing being quite thick, plus the fiberglass that's on the skin, should make it strong enough. Um, but when I'm sticking it together, of course, I do need everything to line up. So that's what I've got these other pieces here for. This is a 10, no, sorry, this is a 10, this is a 10, and this is an 8. And I can put the 8 inside the 10s to join them together and, and line them up to, uh, to do this gluing. I'm just doing a test assembly of the hinges for the flap section. They were originally just plywood, but I didn't trust this little narrow piece here to be very strong. So... I cut some FR4 pieces in the same shape and I just glued those on there and they're nice and shiny so that'll give me a good um, sort of a smooth joint between them because I'll put the FR4 sides together like that so there won't be too much friction there and then I've got this little tiny aluminium tube which is three millimeters outside two millimeters inside and then I'm going to join that together with the two millimeter screw and little FR4 washers onto a lock nut on the other side. Uh oh, looks like I did an oopsie. These plates here, they're four millimeter plywood, so they're quite thick, and there's a little bit of FR4 there as well. So they stick out the side quite a bit, and that's okay here because this piece is gonna be foam, so I can quite easily cut a little recess out of it so that the foam sticks on there nice and flush. But over here, now that we have this fantastic fuselage piece, I'm once again seeing the consequences of my sudden improvisations instead of having a plan from the beginning. And this bulge on this end, uh, that's not going to fit so nice and flush there at all. And I don't want to cut this because it's nice, hard, solid fly, uh, fiberglass and plywood. And it would ruin the integrity of this box section. And it would, yeah, it would just be a pain in the butt to do as well. So what I'm going to do is, I think I'll just trash these. Okay, here's the new design. It's much lighter and more compact all round. And the... Uh, mounting side is made from two pieces of FR4 together and it's much slimmer than it was before and on this side I realized that I only need to reinforce this like the hole itself with FR4 so this is going to be lighter as well with just that stuck on there and when it's put together it's going to be like this and I've had to make a different shape for this mounting plate it's kind of a banana shape now and the reason for that is that the foam for the flap itself is going to be stuck on the inside of the section now so the the plates that I had before these ones here they had this line that sort of cuts across the flap piece itself like that but I can't do that now because when it folds up there's going to be foam here all the way up to here so when it folds up it's going to have to be able to go all the way up there so that's why there's a sort of cavity cut in there and on the outside I will leave those two little screws heads there. This one doesn't matter because it's below the wing. Um, but these two here, it's much easier to make little holes to recess into the fuselage to accommodate that. So that's what I've done there. And that's a lot easier than having to make a um, recess for the whole plate. So I'm much more pleased with this now. The control linkage for the flaps is not as straightforward as for the ailerons and I used this 2D physics simulation program to figure out how I was going to do it and this is the least awkward of the situations that I could think of. So the servo is going to be on the bottom of the wing and the 90 degree or 80 degree range that we're looking at here actually but approximately 90 degree range is going to be like this and it's actually going to connect to the top of the middle part of the flap here there may be better ways to do this but I've kind of already done it now so this is what I'm going to go with and I kind of like this because the first half of the movement only makes it go 
to about there so that would be like take off flaps position and then the last half moves it much further due to the way the linkages are arranged so because these control horns are a little bit unique they can't stick up outside of the uh, the wing because they're gonna have to be in this little bit here which needs to be flush when it closes so what I decided to do was cut a vertical slot in like that and glue them in vertically like that here are all these servos with the extensions added used up quite a bit of servo cable for this and took quite a while to do it it's kind of mind-numbing work but that's what podcasts are for isn't it so as I said they're sharing the same channel so the servo obviously connects up to there I mean the channel connects up to there and there, there's enough room for all these wires to fit in there fairly easily but getting them in there was a bit of a uh, task so I tried this trick where you tie a little nut to the end of fishing line and drop that down first and then loop that around the side of these take the um, DuPont connectors off first or whatever they're called so that there's just a you know squash them together with sellotape so they're smaller and then pull them together down um, at the same time I found I had to do so it was a bit of a nuisance but it's quite nice the result that you get from this everything fits in there nice and snug and smooth and flat Okay, I'm just finishing up sanding of the wings and I just thought I'd mention that the reason that I'm doing this sanding so carefully is not really for aerodynamic reasons, although that is a, obviously a nice side benefit of it, but the main reason is that when you put the glass on, if there's any sort of uh, cavities or jutting little bits uh, underneath it, you're either going to end up with an air bubble or if you fill it with resin, you've got too much resin or more resin than you need, let's say. Um, and it doesn't take much of a dent to do that so I've filled obviously around here is a prime case for that to happen where the uh, foam doesn't quite meet up with the plywood properly so there's quite a bit of this filler in here fortunately it's it's, um, it's that stuff there I'm really glad I discovered that because it's cheap and it's light and it dries quickly and it's it really is easy fill um, yeah so even on some of the points like this where the hot wire cut a little bit too deeply you can see quite a long stretch there like these kind of things here sometimes they're not too bad you can just sand them out if they're not very deep but like this one here um, that was a bit of a problem so I filled that with the the filler and goes all the way over there oh and obviously I'd like to have these kind of smooth as well um, yeah so that's why I'm fussing over this sanding so much okay it's time to glass the wings now and the control surfaces normally what I would do is the control surface would be part of the wing and I would put a piece of Kevlar over here as a hinge and then glass over the top all in one piece. Now I'm not going to do that this time. I could, I could sort of stick these in there and do that, but the problem is that the resin would get in between the wing and the control surface and I've got these fancy sort of hinge bits like that this time and I don't want to get any resin inside that piece because it's supposed to be rotating like that, you know. So what I thought I could try if I wanted to do it that way is this here this is my test just to see if it would work and all I've done is I stuck a very thin strip of paper off oh, I cut on. <laughs> so this is how it started with these hinges cut in there like that like so and it's just some packing tape on the back to uh, hold it together and after that cut was done I covered it up with a piece of paper and this one is using wood glue that one was using polycrylic and I let that dry and then I put this piece of glass over the top and then I cut carefully down the line again and opened it up and it worked quite well especially the wood glue one it was fairly easy to do the poly polycrylic wasn't so easy because as soon as that got wet the paper started to fall apart and it stuck to my fingers and everything as I was putting it down the wood glue was very easy to work with and it kept the glass uh, it kept the resin from the fiberglass out of that crack um, so that would work and if I need to do this in the future for some reason at least I know now that I've done this test that it would work but it's just kind of fraught with difficulty really to try and do it on here because it's not just the seam that we need to keep the resin out of it's uh, at the edge here we need to keep the resin away from this whole area as well so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to take the flap off there obviously it's just on there because it's convenient at the moment but I'm going to glass each one of these flap or control surface sections separately from the wing and then stick them all together afterwards.
Okay, that's all the wing pieces and the control surface pieces glassed and cured and sanded and you know tidied up. Uh, it took a while because there's quite a lot of pieces and all, but eventually got there. So it turned out quite nice. Um, I didn't really screw anything up, and for once I didn't get any brush bristles under the glass as I was laying it down, which is amazing. I don't think I've ever managed that before. Um, the wing tips are a little bit softer than I'd hoped for, so the spar, this is the wing root there, that spar only goes to about here and then there's no spar in this bit here and I was hoping that would be enough. I think it still might be but if it's not, one nice thing about these wings is that at the end here um, the spar hole is open on this side. You saw how I used it to rotisserie this while I was um, putting the glass on but I can actually put a spar in here if I want to so it would be a 10 millimeter tube that goes into here and I would have to put a little piece of 8 millimeter tube inside them so that there was a connection here as well but I think that would work out if I wanted to do that, but I don't really want to. I don't think I'll need to. But uh, anyway, the next step is to glue on the hinges for the two outer sections. And I had to do quite a bit of sanding in here to get the, um, the rotation that I wanted. So we're looking at the bottom of this one here, so it's going to go in there like that. And it's going to be sitting roughly like that when it's, it's straight, and then it's going to fold up like that. Um, and yeah, so I'm glad... This sanding, this bit in here, would have been pretty much impossible if I had have glued these on before I glassed it and used the Kevlar hinge already. Because those Kevlar hinges, they don't flex very well, especially when you've only just cut them open. Uh, so it would have just been impossible to get the sandpaper in there and do the work that I needed to make this nice and loose. And on the other hand, if I had have done this sanding before I glassed them, if I still wanted to glass them all together, I would have had to sand it without having the glass on there. So these sharp, fragile edges would have just been broken. I'm sure I would have broken them at some point. On the other hand, they wouldn't have been sharp like that. I cut my finger quite nicely on, on one of them. That's uh, some evidence of it there. Here I'm just about to glue on the aileron sections and I decided to go with just a partial connection with this Kevlar uh, pieces instead of a full strip along here. The nice thing about the full strip is that it keeps air from coming in and out of this gap but with the arrangement that I have here I don't think there's going to be a whole lot of air coming up through this gap anyway. And the other nice thing about just having small pieces like this is it makes the hinge a lot lighter in movement. And I was originally going to try gluing it on with this sort of a 30 degree down. It's in the full down position at the moment and I thought that might make it easier but it didn't because the Kevlar just sort of wanted to spring back up and the glue wasn't holding it down so I eventually had to change to just doing it flat. Um, this is, uh, th I think this is the next day, I just put some uh, pill play on there to try and smooth up the surface and wick up a little bit of extra epoxy. Now unfortunately a couple of these pieces ended up rather crooked. They work fine but they just didn't really end up where I wanted to and the reason is that they warped a little bit and I think it's because when I let it, the epoxy cure I just let it let it cure like this, just sitting there like that. And I didn't flatten them down with anything. Probably what I should have done is put some weights on them so that they were flat against the bench like that. But it just seemed a little bit awkward because they're all covered with glue there and I didn't want to ruin the surface. But anyway, so I paid for that by ending up with this uh, horrible connection here. It looks terrible, but it works fine, I think. And for the control horns for these, I decided to go again with a vertically glued in piece of FR4 as I did for the flaps. I haven't tried this before, and the only reason I came up with this idea is because of that funny arrangement with the flaps that I needed to make the, the linkages work in those specific angles. But once, once I tried it, it was actually fairly easy to do. I think it's going to make a very nice connection. There's all of this area, so if you take the line from here and then you bring that all the way up to here, this whole area underneath is in contact with the foam on both sides with uh, Gorilla Glue I used for this. And there's nothing sticking out into the airflow, which is kind of nice as well. So I hope this works, and if it does, I'll try it in the future as well, I think. This is going to be the tray for the battery to go on. It's 3mm plywood, and I'm going to strengthen it with some of this uh, 200 gram carbon that I got from Banggood just as a test purchase to see what it's like. Seems okay. It's only $3.50 for this little bit here, 60 centimeters by 20. Um, I do have a little bit of unidirectional tape left over that I could use to strengthen other directions as well, but 
I'm going to try using the carbon toe to do this instead because it's fairly narrow. I want it to go, I want it to be strong across here and diagonally and through the middle. Um, and I noticed when I was using the toe before that if you flatten it out, it's actually fairly wide. It's sort of about 10 or 11 millimeters wide and it's roughly as dense as this tape anyway. So it's good for placing things exactly where you want in a narrow direction, which is exactly what I'm about to do. Um, and for the surface finish or the the way I'm going to press it, I'm going to put some of this um, perforated film on it to try and get a smoother surface than last time, um, last time being when I made this. And it's a little bit hard to see on camera maybe, but I used peel ply here and it makes a very rough surface and that's because the peel ply, the point of it is to have some rough surface for the next layer of epoxy to key into so it works perfectly for that but I, it's just rough and it's sort of dirt I can see dirt getting stuck in there after a while so I thought I might try and make it smooth so I'll put this on directly next to the carbon and then I'll put maybe three layers of peel ply on top to wick away the epoxy that comes through. I'm not going to use breather cloth and I'm not going to use vacuum bag. I had a few suggestions on the video about this that I should use vacuum bag but uh, it's just a little bit of a hassle and the other issue is that you'll get epoxy all over the other side of the plywood or I suppose I could put packing tape on the other side to prevent that um, but it's just easier to do it this way um, and the reason I'm not going to use breather cloth on here is because I want to put that aluminium plate on with weights and the the peel ply will remain nice and flat, but the breather cloth will be sort of a little bit soft, I think. So to keep it flat, I'm just going to use peel ply, and we'll see how that goes. Oh, the, the reason that I'm not doing two sides at a time, some other, other comments in the previous video uh, recommended that if you don't want the plywood to warp up in one direction like a banana, like this, you should be curing the carbon and the epoxy on both sides at the same time, but... I don't really want to do that because I need to see this side of it to cut around here with my scroll saw and drill the holes again before I can do the other side. And the unfortunate thing about carbon is that you can't see through it, unlike fiberglass, which is kind of nice. And some other suggestions in that video were to put the carbon onto the plywood before I cut it with the CNC machine. And the reason that I'm not doing that is because plywood cuts very nicely with the spiral flute bit and carbon cuts very nicely with the burr style bit. Um, it might go okay if it was just a thin layer of carbon, it might go okay with the spiral cut. Um, but it also makes a lot of horrible nasty dust which is electrically conductive and I don't want it to get into the motors or into my laptop or anything like that. So what I've been doing in the past is whenever I cut carbon with my CNC machine I've had it immersed in water or water running over it so that the dust didn't get in the air. And I don't know if I'd really want to do that with the plywood in the middle. So. For that reason, um, I am listening to the suggestions, I'm not just not following them. <laughs> well, that was pretty easy. I think it took me longer to cut the little strips of carbon toe than it did to do all this uh, resin application here. So I don't think it's going to end up very flat because I can already see the bulges from the strips of carbon toe underneath there poking up. But anyway, we'll see. It doesn't really matter. It's just a, it's just a battery tray. It's a little heavy. Okay, well it's fairly smooth. But I can see that it's going to be way, way, way heavier than it needs to be. Alright, so here's that piece all finished up. Um, I'm not very impressed with the weight. And it's not even that smooth really. Some of the... Um, these pieces here are all kind of bubbly and stuff. Uh, so I don't think I'll be in a hurry to try it with that method again. Although I will keep this piece of course and use it. And it's quite strong so I'm not going to put anything on the back. I don't think it needs it. It'll be fine as is. Current, maybe? 
That's not a good sign, is it? Maybe I should try the 12 inch prop instead of the 13. Alright, so it works fine with the 10 inch prop. I guess the 13 inch prop was just too much load for something out there. But it didn't cut out. So that's interesting. Um, yeah, so I don't know what the problem with the 13 inch prop was. I mean, we have an 80 amp ESC 3548 motor, which is pretty beefy. Um, and it wasn't reading that much current when I looked at the video. It was like 16 amps or something. I'm a little suspicious of this current meter actually. It seems to be reading quite a bit lower current than I would expect. Okay, I'm going to try the 13 inch prop again and see if it cuts out like it did last time. Well, what do you know? It seemed to be okay this time. Uh... The only difference was that I didn't bring the throttle on quite so quickly from half throttle to full throttle. I, I sort of ramped it up a bit slower. Uh, so this leaves me a little bit puzzled about what to do. <laughs> it's probably safe to go with the 12 inch prop I think, isn't it?